Hi everybody, Melissa O'Connell, your Lexus Technology Specialist. And today I have a deep dive virtual tutorial on the 2020 Lexus ES. So while everybody is practicing social distancing and trying to really limit our time away from home, we wanna make sure that you still get to know your brand new Lexus. And so come along, let's go explore the Lexus ES. I happen to be sitting in one right now. Let's hop outside and I wanna show you some cool features inside and out. It's always a good idea to be aware of the location of the parking sensors. You'll see them on the front bumper and grill, parking sensor location on the rear bumper. So those are going to beep at you when you get too close to something. Generally, they activate it about three feet away and you'll have an indication on your dash as well as the beep. You want to make sure that you always have your smart access key with you. That is how you lock, unlock, and start the vehicle from inside. You can also open the trunk with just a push and hold and you have a vehicle alert button or an alarm. If you are used to using that alarm button to find your vehicle in a parking lot, make sure you change over to using the Lexus app. If you are getting a new Lexus vehicle, you'll have a trial period for Lexus Inform Remote, and that comes with the ability to locate your vehicle in its last parking place. Now let's take a look at how Smart Access allows you to enter your vehicle. Just make sure that your key is in your pocket or your purse. Put your hand in the door handle, any door handle. So let's go ahead and practice using Smart Access to lock and unlock your Lexus. Make sure that your key is in your pocket or your bag. Any door handle that has an indentation means it is equipped with smart access. So if you put your hand in the door handle and just make contact, those side mirrors will open automatically if the auto feature is on your vehicle and engaged. So my hand in the door handle, driver's side door, is just unlocking my driver's door. If I want to then open the rest of the vehicle, I would need to hit the unlock button inside, or because we have smart access on all four doors on an ES, I'm able to just touch the inside door handle of the back doors and I've opened the entire ES. That's also customizable. So if you wanted to program your driver's door to unlock the entire vehicle, you can do that in settings in the system in the car. We talked about being able to power open the trunk on the ES. If you have a power trunk feature, you're going to see the push and hold button if it's not power, it's going to just pop open and then you can lift it manually. But on this vehicle, if we push and hold, you'll hear a beep, it's going to power open. To close the trunk, you want to use the button on the trunk lid, or if the trunk is equipped with a kick sensor, you can kick to open and close. So the kick sensor is part of the smart access system. So you wanna make sure that you have your smart key with you and then you're going to just kick and retrieve your foot right at the center of the back bumper. Let's take a closer look at how that works. Make sure you have your smart access key with you. Again, just in your pocket or your bag at the back center of the bumper, just kick. Step back, you'll hear a tune and the trunk will power open for you. When you're finished loading or unloading in your cargo area, just simply kick again, and then it will close. It's 
So keep in mind that the kick sensor does not walk your vehicle. So if you need to walk away from your vehicle, you want to either walk on your smart key or with the indentation on the door handle. Taking a look inside the trunk, make sure that you are aware of your front mount for your license plate on the front of the vehicle. This is required in many states, so do not discard. Your new Lexus vehicle should also come with a first aid kit that's Velcroed to the interior of the trunk. You'll have a cargo net stored neatly in a zip pouch. Let's take a look at how the zip pouch cargo net works. You just unzip to reveal the netting. You have hooks on either side of your trunk. Put those tabs in place and you have a nice net with a solid base to keep everything neat and tidy. If you would like to connect the two center cords, this piece actually pops off and it has two connector points. You can simply hook that onto the back cord and then take the front cord and snap that into place. Now it will keep everything even better contained. If you need to access the tools or the spare tire area, you want to always put away your cargo net and completely store and remove the pouch. Because the clasps are plastic, you want to unhook from the D-ring and let's remove that pouch. Now we have access to the cargo area. You're going to remove the carpet mat or simply fold it back. You'll see it says lift and hook. That lets you know that with this hook, you can clip into place right at the top, and then it keeps your hands free to be able to access the tools and the spare tire. When you're putting things back, make sure that you snap and snug right into place so everything stays quiet while you're on the road. So in this area, we have all of the tools for changing a tire, including a wheel lock key. So if your vehicle comes equipped with wheel locks, your wheel lock key will snap right into this storage spot. You wanna make sure to hold on to that. To identify a wheel lock, look for the lug nut that has the wave pattern. That is your locking lug nut. Your wheel lock key matches to that lug nut. When you're finished, just lift up to release. Slide that back into its spot. Snap that clasp to close. And I like to always make sure that this felted panel is pushed neatly down into place. And then replace your cargo mat. And then you can replace your cargo net. When you're putting your cargo net back into place, make sure that the hook side is closest to the D-ring. And then you'll have better access to your netting. If you're opening your trunk with your smart access key, the button from the interior of the vehicle, or even the kick sensor. You always have the capability of closing a power trunk with the power trunk close button on the left-hand side of the trunk lid. Just push and release and it will close for you. 
The ES and ES hybrid use regular fuel. There is a button in the interior to open the fuel door. This is one of our vehicles that is not a push to release for the fuel door. So let's take a look at the buttons inside. Your fuel door release button and trunk release button are just inside the driver's door. Right below is the manual release for the hood. The first thing that every new vehicle owner should do is set a safe, comfortable position for their seat. All of the seat controls for Lexus are on the side of the seat bottom cushion. You can move forward, back. You can lift the hip point up or down and the front of the cushion supporting the front of your legs can also go up or down. You can tilt the seat back, forward, or back. You can even control lumbar support. Once you have your seat positioned in the best spot for you, your next step is to adjust the side mirrors. You'll choose left and then right using the touch pad to make your adjustments. If you have auto folding mirrors, you will have either a toggle or a button that has a light. If you have a toggle, it needs to be toggled to the center. If you push to the left, that will open the mirrors, push down and to the right, that will power close the mirrors. Toggle to the center and they will automatically close for you when you lock your ES. We're going to go ahead and apply the brake and push to start. And now we can also adjust our steering wheel. Our steering wheel adjustment is with the toggle on the left-hand side. You can move the wheel up, down, to you, and away. Once you have your seat, your steering wheel, and your side mirrors adjusted to your preferred driving position, you're going to save the driver position memory. This is going to be in the driver's door. In the case of the ES, it's just above the door handle. We're going to push the word set, let it go, and number one. So now the number one position is saved. I can have two additional saved positions. If after I've driven for a little while, I decide I wanna make a change to the seat, steering wheel, or side mirrors, just re-save. Set, let it go, and number one. So if someone has driven your vehicle, like a valet or your spouse, and you need to just send the seat back to your spot, just push your number and all of the adjustments will be made that you saved previously. Let's keep exploring. You have a coin holder or small storage space tucked behind the headlamp stock. We have the adjustment for the brightness of our instrument cluster. So the up arrow will increase the brightness. The down arrow will make it more dim. To the right, we have our odometer and trip meter button. So if you can take a look in this area, while I push the button, it will cycle us through trip A, trip B. When you see the wrench, that's letting you know how many miles before your next oil change. Keep in mind, you're going to service every 5,000 miles, but every 10,000 miles is when they typically do an oil change unless the vehicle were to need it sooner. Especially right now, a lot of people are not doing a lot of driving. So if you don't reach 5,000 miles within six months, you still want to come in for service. So the rule now is every 5,000 miles or every six months, you should bring your vehicle into the Lexus dealership for service. Let's keep scrolling through that odometer trip meter button. 
your next screen is blank. So if you ever get into your vehicle and you don't see your mileage, don't panic. It doesn't mean it's gone away. It just means it's been turned off because that's an option. Push again and you'll be back on odometer showing the overall miles for the vehicle. Trip A and trip B can be cleared if you're tracking mileage for work, for example, or if you're tracking mileage on a trip. Just push and hold. It will zero out. You can only do that on trip A and trip B. Your headlamp stock is located on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. On the end, you'll see a button to push for automatic high beams. When your automatic high beams are turned on, you'll see a green light. You also need to push your headlamp stock forward so that your automatic high beams will be engaged. Keep in mind, this means you need to have your automatic low beams, your regular headlights also turned on into the auto mode. If you have a circumstance where you would like to turn all of your lights off, just turn the dial to the bottom where it says DRL off. That means daytime running lights off. If they're in auto, then your daytime running lights will be on until your low beam headlights or high beam headlights are required. We have a parking light or daytime running lights only. And then the manual control for your low beam headlights. This vehicle has a lane change indicator feature where if you just do a soft press either down or up, you get a certain number of clicks or flashes of your indicator and that can be customized. If you're turning, you want to click fully down or fully up and then the stock will release as you come through the turn. The windshield wiper stock is on the right hand side of the steering wheel. The first set of information lets you know what function you're in. If you push up, you're going to get one swipe for mist and then it will automatically come down to the off position. If your system says auto, then you have rain sensing automatic windshield wipers if you have turned them on. If it says INT for intermittent, then you're in charge of your windshield wipers. But for auto, we come down one click from the off position and then we can adjust the sensitivity of the automatic wipers. Or what we're really doing is telling the car how little or how much water to respond to. So if it's not raining very hard, you might need to make sure that they're in the most sensitive position and then it won't take quite so much water to get those windshield wipers to engage. If you want to manually control the wipers, just click down again for low, and then at the very bottom position is high. Low, back to auto. To clean the front windshield, you would just pull the stock to you. Let's go through the buttons on the steering wheel. Don't get overwhelmed. I'm going to explain each one. And if you have questions, we can always follow up. If you just leave a comment here, I'm happy to get back to you. Starting on the left-hand side, you're going to see up, down, left and right arrows. And the ES has a button in the middle that says, okay. Some vehicles just have a dot. They all function in the same way. This is a go back button because all of these buttons control your multi-information screen. So it's really an operation control system for the menu. Mission control, menu control, you get the idea. 
So when you use the arrows to control the multi-information display, you can move left or right, and in certain screens, you can move up or down. So now that you know that this is what I'm using to operate that screen, I'm going to zoom you into that screen and talk you through the features that are available. Anytime we need to select something, we're going to be pushing the OK button right in the middle. If we need to go back, we're going to use our Go Back button. Now let's take a look at that multi-information screen. You'll notice that right now we are in the information menu. You'll see the I at the very top left circled. If we arrow down, we have additional fuel economy information, an eco indicator. This lights up as you're driving, tire pressure monitor, and a blank screen if that's what you prefer. Cycling back, because again, this is just a big loop. If I keep clicking down enough, I'll end up back where I started. If I wanna go to the right, I'll have a compass. Right again to music. Right again to the screen that monitors our lane keep assist and cruise control. Right again, messages about service right again and into settings. Let's go through the settings on the vehicle so that you know that you have all of the safety equipment turned on for your Lexus ES. Lane centering is part of that lane keep assist feature. If you are using dynamic radar cruise control and you have lane centering turned on, the vehicle's gonna work a little bit harder to keep you centered in the lane. If you don't want any of these items to be selected, you just deselect. So you would click that OK button in our panel of arrows. We'll click OK and turn off lane centering. I do encourage you to leave these features turned on initially. Just know that they're on and what they do so that when your vehicle does something to try to help you out, you recognize it as helpful. If we arrow down to steering assist, this is going to give you a gentle nudge in the right direction if you start to veer out of your lane and you don't have your blinker on. The alert for lane keep assist right now is set to vibrate. If you push the OK button, you can change it to an audible alert. Most people prefer the vibration. If you heard that, that's the steering wheel vibrating. The sensitivity can be adjusted from high or standard. Pre-collision system this can be turned off. You are going to get this message because we really don't want you to turn this off. We want you using the pre-collision system. In fact, we want you using it so much that if you turn your car off, when you get back in, it's going to turn itself back on. Arrowing down, you can adjust the sensitivity for pre-collision. This is what's recommended if you find that you're getting warnings from the pre-collision system that you feel like are too aggressive, just cycle through. You have a long range warning, a mid range warning, and a close range warning. Most people prefer the midpoint. Coming down to BSM, that's our blind spot monitor. The blind spot monitor lights up in your side mirror. If there's a vehicle in your blind spot on either side, both mirrors will light. Keep in mind that it does have to be turned on and the vehicle will need to be in your blind spot. So not right beside you where you could just turn your head to see it. So we wanna make sure that you're still using your mirrors and not just relying on all the technology that is there to supplement your mirrors. 
Like many other features on the vehicle, blind spot monitor is speed sensitive. So if you're driving slowly through a parking lot or in traffic, it's not going to be constantly blinking at you. PKSA, parking support alert. Boy, say that 10 times fast. Okay, I won't do that, I promise. Parking support alert is about things that beep at you. So it is supporting you with an alert while you're parking. Parking sensors, those are the items that we looked at, those sonar sensors that are on your front and back bumper. Rear cross traffic alert. If you're backing up and someone is crossing behind your vehicle, you're going to get beeps and an alert. And this is where you can adjust how loud or soft that alert may be. Now, we clicked in to the PKSA menu, the parking support alert menu. Now we need to get out of it because these are our only items that we can see. Here's where that go back button happens. We're going to push go back. And now we're back to our settings screen. Let's come down to a symbol. And if you're wondering what in the world does that symbol mean? It represents auto braking. So your parking system, the parking sensors, the rear cross traffic alert, they are linked to auto braking. So we wanna have that turned on because if you are getting an alert, if someone is crossing behind you and you're continuing to reverse and the vehicle is beeping and telling you, please stop, we want it to be able to help you out and apply that brake. You have the capability of adjusting from miles to kilometers, depending on where you live. And then you have an item called vehicle settings. This is another great spot push to open, you can adjust whether or not your sway warning is on or off. And if it is on, you can change the sensitivity. Sway warning means that your lane keeping feature has given you multiple indications in a row where it thinks that you are perhaps a fatigued driver. And it is going to pop up a picture of a coffee cup it does not mean that Starbucks is close by. It means that it is concerned that you are either not using your blinker or are perhaps too tired to be driving. So it wants you to take a rest. Even though we were able to turn on and off our blind spot monitor earlier, inside vehicle settings, if you push OK, you can adjust the brightness of that indicator in your mirrors. You can also adjust the sensitivity. So how far out is that system looking for a car in your blind spot? Let's push our go back button again. And here we have another symbol. What the heck does that mean? This is for road sign assist. If we open it up, it lets us know Road sign assist, RSA, is turned on. We could turn it off, but it's pretty cool if you have it on. Come down to excess speed. If you want to be notified if you're going over the speed limit, you can decide, do you want a visual notification? So it's going to pop up a symbol showing you a speed sign. If you want visual and audible, it's going to pop up the symbol, the speed limit sign, as well as beep at you. Most people prefer only visual or no notification at all. And it depends on whether or not your speed limit signs are in the right height for the camera that's mounted at the front of the vehicle to see them. So your camera is mounted just behind your rear view mirror and it looks forward. That camera is used for your lane keep assist, your pre-collision system. Now the pre-collision and the radar cruise control are not only using the camera, but they're using that millimeter wave radar that's mounted at the front of the vehicle located just behind the Lexus logo. If we come back, you can change your notification level. Do you wanna be notified when you're one mile, three miles, or five miles over the speed limit? Completely up to you. 
other signs are going to be things like stop signs, yield signs, right of way signs. Going back, our kick sensor that we used at the trunk does need to be turned on. If you have turned it off, you will be disabling that function. So if your car comes equipped with a kick sensor, I say turn it on and use it. Make life simple. Tire pressure warning system. We are really into acronyms around here. This is where your technician would come in, set your pressure, and if you've had a wheel change or your tires have been balanced or rotated recently, this is where they will come in and they will make changes. So you don't really have to worry about that one, but it's nice to know that you have it. Scheduled maintenance and oil change maintenance, those are also going to be updated when you come in for service. The last item in our settings screen is meter settings. If you want to customize, select OK for Drive Info 1. Select the item that you would like to change. So let's say, for example, average fuel economy after reset. Let's say we wanted to actually show our cruising range. So we wanted to know about how many miles do we have left on our tank of gas. Select range, push OK. Push that go back button. And then we can go to the right to shortcut after we get out of our menu, get back to our information screen and you'll see we've changed it to range right below current fuel economy. So you could do the same thing with Drive Info 2. Range is typically put on the second screen. I never know why, so I always like to customize that on my car. So now we can go to the left, move us back to our settings, go to meter settings, then come down to drive info two, push okay. And I don't know why they always put range on the second screen, but on my vehicles, I definitely like to customize that. So let's push okay. And let's choose another helpful item. How about, let's put after, after, how about, let's put average fuel economy after refuel. That means every time we get a new tank of gas, it's going to automatically update that calculation for us. Average speed is another one that you might want to customize. This is great if you're a heavy commuter and you're trying to figure out the best time of day to take a drive. You can push and hold that OK button to reset or zero it out, and then it will help you determine what your speed is for that particular trip. But not a lot of people really need to use that feature. So let's take a look at another item that's really popular. We'll push OK, and then let's arrow down to elapsed time after start. We're gonna push OK here. Now I'm pushing the go back button to get out of those menu items. I'm back in my main settings menu. I'm going to push the right arrow to go back to information. Now I can see those drive info screens, information one and two. So this is drive information two after refuel. Now keep in mind, this is a new car that just got a brand new tank of gas in it. So it's going to update that fuel economy as I drive. Right now, I'm only getting 0.8 miles per gallon because I've literally driven from the gas tank to this parking spot. So we haven't gone very far yet. After start, that means that we started the engine 36 minutes ago. Thanks for being with me. If I arrow up and I go to the drive information one screen, that's where we have that current fuel economy and range that we set just a moment ago.
When you're looking at your dashboard and you're seeing all those lights, it's good to know that green is good. Green means that certain things are turned on. Going from left to right, we see that the headlamps are on, automatic high beams are turned on. Moving on the right hand side, BSM, our blind spot monitor is turned on. We've got park in large bold red letters because we are in park. And I currently am not driving, so I do not have my seat belt on. So it's telling me, put my seat belt on. So the red indicators are safety and parking position related. Our emergency parking brake is engaged. Green is a safety feature or a convenience feature is turned on. Let's go back to our steering wheel buttons. We've taken care of all of our multi-information display buttons. This is our telephone button. The ES has one button to answer, hang up or ignore, just push. You can adjust your volume for phone and radio, minus for less, plus for more. Your voice command or talk button is for the onboard voice command system. You can give commands for the radio, navigation, Bluetooth telephone, all right with a touch of your button. The first time you push the button, it will give you an opportunity to do a voice training system. Before you start, consider viewing the available video tutorials or voice training functionality. Select the Do Not Tell Me Again option if you do not want this reminder again, or just push the talk button to continue. The tutorials and training will always be available from the voice settings menu. We'll explore voice commands more in just a moment. On the right hand side of the steering wheel, you have radar cruise control. Just push to turn it on and you'll see your radar cruise control indicator right above your odometer trip meter. I'm going to turn it back off just to push and I want you to see that if you push and hold that button, your setting will change from radar cruise to standard cruise where you're just selecting your speed you're not using a following distance with the radar. Most people prefer to use radar cruise, set your speed where you can increase, reduce. If you click cancel, then you can resume. But once you turn your cruise control on, set your speed and then adjust your following distance. So let's take a look. If I click through, the three different levels of following distance. Think of this like a buffer zone. So if I'm pushing that button, that following distance button, I've got a long range, a mid range, and a close range for my vehicle to slow me down and then speed me back up, depending on whether or not it senses another vehicle in close proximity to the front of the vehicle. Our next item is that lane keep assist that we discussed. So on the ES, you have a more advanced feature called lane trace assist. So if you are using dynamic radar cruise control, so the system that we just talked about, if you have it turned on and set, then when you use lane trace assist, if the vehicle and the camera are not able to pick up on the lane markers, it's able to trace off of the vehicle in front of you. So let's use our multi-information display that we just learned about, arrow over to the lane trace assist screen. It's telling us radar ready. It's showing an example of the front of the vehicle and lane markers. Right now, the lane markers are showing hollow. If they light up solid, then it means it's registering the paint or the markings on the road. If it's not able to see them and you have cruise control turned on and you're at high speeds on the freeway, 
it's going to be able to trace off of the vehicle in front of you. Lane Trace Assist. If you're not using radar cruise control, it's going to engage the part of the feature that I referred to earlier, Lane Keep Assist. So if you start to veer out of your lane and you don't have your blinker on, whichever lane you're approaching is going to light up and flash, kind of like an orange color. You're gonna get some beeps. You're gonna get a vibration in your steering wheel, depending on the setting that you chose in the multi-information display. You'll even get a nudge or a correction. Once again, depending on your customization. The last few buttons on the right hand side are for our sound system. So you can move through left and right arrows that will take you through your radio presets. It'll scroll you through tracks depending on what type of audio you're listening to. And you can change your audio source with your mode button. Just click through to change AM, FM, satellite, Bluetooth, you name it. If you push and hold your mode button, you're able to pause or mute your audio. Push and hold again to resume. Moving up from the steering wheel, you'll notice two additional dials on either side of the gauge cluster. These are right within reach of the driver. Their position was designed by race car drivers. The whole goal was to minimize movement for the driver so you can really easily reach from the steering wheel to the dial. On the right hand side, you have your drive mode selector. You can turn the dial down for eco and you'll see the instrument cluster light up in blue. Turn up for sport and you have red. There's also a notification on the large screen as well. If you push the dial in at the end, we go to our normal mode. And so all of that lighting turns off. The drive mode selector affects throttle response. So if you dial down to eco, when you give it gas, it's going to try to help you be not quite such a lead foot. It'll help you to have the best fuel economy possible. If you twist up for sport, you're going for a more aggressive drive style. So it's going to be a little zippier, not necessarily fuel focused. When you turn the vehicle off, if you're in sport mode, when you turn it back on, it's actually gonna automatically default to normal mode because of fuel economy. If you're in eco mode, when you turn the car off and back on, it's going to stay in eco mode. Same with normal. Eco or normal will stay when you turn the car off or on. Sport will default back to normal mode. On the left-hand side, you do have the capability of turning off your traction control. Under most circumstances, we leave traction control on. If you were to turn it off, it is going to give you a message that it's off. And then you can simply click on the end to turn it back on. Moving to the left, we have the option of turning off our traction control. If you push the button in to turn it off, it's going to give you a message that traction control is off. So we have another item that's here that you may have noticed. These are paddle shifters. You'll see a plus and a minus. So if you want to use the sequential shifter, which is a clutchless manual mode, you would shift up or down by clicking on the paddle shifters. So a right click is up and then a left is down. Sequential mode is accessed by applying the brake, squeeze the release on the gear shift, shift down to drive, which is automatic, and then just shift over to the left 
and you'll see the S for sequential mode or sport mode light up. You'll also notice a plus and a minus on the gearbox. You can tap up or down on the gearbox to shift gears as well. To move out of sequential mode, just slide it to the right and go back to drive. So most people with an ES are not gonna be driving in sequential mode, but just know that you can. If you've gone to sequential mode accidentally, which can happen, just go ahead and slide it back to the right. That can happen even when you're driving along. If you accidentally go into sequential mode, just push it back to the right. No need to panic. While we're down at our gearbox, let's address the brake hold button. Our automatic parking brake or emergency brake located under our engine start stop button, that's engaging for us every time we put the vehicle into park. This holds our foot brake. So you do have to have your seat belt on. So make sure, click it or tick it. Shift into drive then you can push the brake hold button. When you push the brake hold button, you're going to see that green means the feature is turned on, the yellow orange color means it's actively holding the foot brake. So take a look, right now my foot is on the brake, but if I release, the system has taken over and the system is holding and I am sitting right here. So it's a good thing that I know it's doing what it's supposed to do or I'd be somewhere I don't wanna be. Thank goodness for brake hold. So if I needed to drive, I would, in this case, because I have a building in front of me, I would put my foot on the brake, shift into reverse. Can you see that? Because I'm in an ES with this amazing backup camera, I have my yellow indication lines that are dynamic, so they move with me and they let me know my intended path. Now let's say I wanna to come to a stop and I wanted to go into drive. So I'm gonna automatically, it's gonna go back to the screen that was previously on, the map was on and my brake hold is once again engaged. So now I'm in drive. If I tap on the accelerator, so let's say I wanna move forward, when I come to a complete stop, so I am putting the brake on right now myself with my foot, but because I have brake hold turned on, if I let go after I see that yellow hold, it means it's going to take over and hold the foot brake for me. This can be really helpful if you're you know, stuck at a train or something like that and you don't wanna just keep applying the brake yourself. But if you forget that you have it, don't worry about it. Cup holders on the ES. Up front, we have a couple of neat little details. You can fold up to reveal a deeper space. If you push, then the little shelf comes down to make it more shallow for smaller cups. You have a cup holder up front, a smartphone holder here. This isn't a charger or anything, but you can just slip your smart smartphone in, which is great because you have two USB ports right here. And these USB ports are how you power Apple CarPlay. You do want to be plugged in with an actual authentic data certified cord. So it's always a good idea to go with a genuine Apple cord. Same thing for Android Auto. You can put your phone here and make sure to connect with a data certified cord plug in to the USB ports right here in the center console. If you wanna close things up, just gently push. CD player, single CD, eject, pause and play are going to be on the screen. We've got the buttons to control the heating and ventilated seats. The first push is going to go to automatic. That means it's going to choose what needs to be turned on 
based on the temperature inside the cabin as well as the temperature outside. So if you disagree with it, that's no problem. Just take over. So you can push the button yourself and choose from three different levels of fan or heat. Driver side, passenger side, heated steering wheel. The heated steering wheel also has an auto feature and just push to take over. The steering wheel has two levels of heat and the seats have three levels of heat and cool. Moving up our center stack, your radio power, volume, and tuner dial are all together. So they're very easy for the driver to reach. Push to turn it on or off. Turn the volume on the tall portion. The lower wide portion is your tuner dial. It's always nice to know about the hard button shortcuts that you have right at your fingertips. The radio hard button and media hard button will pull up your screen for those items. So just give the radio button a push and you'll see your sources. If you push a second time, if your radio was turned off, it will turn it on. If you're already on and you push again, it operates like a mode button and it will cycle you through your radio sources. Your media button is going to engage other music items like CD or a smartphone that's connected through Bluetooth or USB. Your seek and track buttons are similar to the buttons that are on the steering wheel, but the difference is that these buttons also take you through your radio presets. So if we click either left or right, we're actually moving up or down our favorites list. If you want to seek from the steering wheel, you push and hold and it will go to the next available signal. The buttons that are the hard buttons on the center console do not move you through your radio presets. They will allow you to seek just with a click up or down or they will move you through tracks on a CD or an iPod or a smartphone connected through Bluetooth or USB. Our next buttons moving up are all for climate control. Automatic fan. When you turn that on, the vehicle decides what fan speed you need for the temperature that you've selected as well as the temperature outside. If you increase, you can really hear it blasting us off. If you increase your temperature, you'll notice that fan speed will decrease. If you lower your temperature, that fan speed will increase again. If you want to take over the fan, you can either turn it off or manually adjust. Less fan, more fan, everything off. The position of the airflow is also important. So you can have face and feet, just feet, feet and defrost, face only. So we're cycling through those options in a drop down menu, unless you want to see them full screen. And if you want to see them full screen, you need to go to climate control. So we're going to push our menu button right down by the touchpad. Come over to climate. And then you have some additional menu items available or click climate to open up the entire climate control screen. So as we cycle through, you can see where the air is flowing so that you're comfortable. 
front defrost, rear window and side mirror defrost. Where is your air coming from? Recirculating air, outside air, or we have the option of auto. Now you'll notice right now it's not turning on and that's because I don't have the fan engaged. Once I've engaged the fan, then it will let me select auto. That means the vehicle's going to use the smog sensor on board, the temperature I've selected, the outside temperature, and then it's going to decide, should I be using recirculating air or fresh outside air? We reviewed the hard buttons for seating and steering temperature adjustment. You can also take care of it right on the screen. Just use your touchpad to select. Nice and simple. Highlight the area you want to adjust, click down, and then flick your finger up or down. Click again when you've selected. You don't even have to click down to select, just highlight the area and flick your finger on the touchpad. If you'd like your Lexus to take charge of all of it for you, you can turn on the climate concierge. If you have the climate concierge turned on, you will see an indicator just to the left of the Lexus logo. This means all you have to do is adjust your temperature and your Lexus is going to adjust everything else for you. All I'm doing is adjusting that temperature up, down, and you're seeing the fan engage, the heat engage, the heated seats, heated steering wheel, and that climate concierge will maintain all of those settings for me. All I have to do is change the temperature. Our last item on the climate screen is options that take us into another menu where we can turn on and off climate concierge, eco heat and cool. If we want the system to cycle off of the heating and air conditioning system more quickly for better fuel economy, we also have a windshield wiper de-icer. This is handy in the colder months if you have a freeze or frost on your front windshield. Dual is something that you can turn on or off. Dual means that you have separate temperatures running. One for the driver and one for the passenger. Most people like to have separate temperatures, but only if you have multiple people in the car. So if you're going to be in the car by yourself and you want the temperatures to sync, so right now we have 71 for the driver, 80 for the passenger, we can turn off dual and then they will sync and match the driver's position. So now we have a single temperature. If the passenger makes an adjustment, dual turns on automatically. It's not going to interfere with the driver's temperature. The last item is the ability to turn on or off the AC compressor. Depending on where you live, you're going to want to leave it on and let it condition the air and pull moisture out of the air. Definitely in Texas, we need it on. To clear out of options, you can push front you'll notice that there's an additional menu item right at the bottom. There's a little double chevron symbol and it says setting. That is controlled with this button, the double chevron additional menu item button. Give it a push and you'll see those controls that you saw in the options menu. So it's just another way to get there. Climate concierge, auto for the fan, off for the fan, and when we have things turned on, you'll have your AC compressor dual. So it's a handy way to be able to turn dual on or off. And again, eco heat and cool. 
Now, the easiest way to turn dual off is actually with this side menu. So all of the icons on the right hand side of the screen can open additional screens. So if we click on the screen for climate control, you'll see all those controls that we were looking at previously, they're just condensed into a smaller size, but you've got your dual button right there. So if we wanna sync up and go to a single temperature, just select dual or deselect dual in this case. To go back to our full screen map or to make any item full screen, just click on the bottom right hand corner and it will push everything away and open up your full screen nice and easy. Since we've explored the menu for climate control, let's take a look at other items in the menu. And again, we're just operating from the menu button, the go back button, and the touchpad. This go back button operates your main screen. We've seen a go back button before on the left hand side of our steering wheel. That's operating our small screen. When I push the menu button, you'll be able to access all of the features in your main menu. We've addressed climate control on the far right. So now let's go from the left. We have the ability to pull up a destination search. We can shortcut right to the search. We can go home if we programmed a destination close to home. I always recommend programming something close to home rather than your exact house, just for safety. Recents, those are your previously searched destinations. You can save favorite items and even sync to addresses in your contacts. If we click destination, we have most of those same items right in front of us on the left hand side of our screen. We also have a feature called destination assist. If we push our go back button, you'll go back to your map screen. So if you wanted to find another way to search straight from your map screen, just click on the magnifying glass and you're right back to your search screen. Also know that you can click home right at the top if that's already been programmed. My favorite way to tell the navigation system to take you to your home is to use voice command. That's where that onboard voice command button comes in handy. Go home. The home preset is not defined. And if we have a home address saved, it will route us to our destination. We have some other videos that go into detail about the Lexus navigation system. So make sure to explore those. The links will be in the description below. Back to our main menu. We've already reviewed our audio screen through our hard button radio and media buttons. But you'll notice that if you hover or highlight the audio button, you have shortcuts, AM, FM, and satellite. If you have a disc, then the disc button will be highlighted. USB would be highlighted if you have an audio source plugged in through USB. And you can sync your phone through Bluetooth for Bluetooth audio. If you click on audio, you'll be right back to that audio screen that we've explored a little bit. Our sources are at the top. Presets. This lets us fa save a favorite station. So when you use the tuner dial or voice command, you can tune to a station. Let's check that out. Tune to the bridge. The bridge. 
If we want to save this station as a preset, we need to open our preset menu, pick the spot where we want to save our selected station, and we're going to highlight it with the trackpad or the touchpad. And then we're going to push and hold until you hear a beep and it assigns that station. If you want to make a change, again, you can use voice command or just use the tuner dial. You can then pick your spot with your touchpad, push and hold, and it will override whatever was in the spot, saving your new station. Radio replay on the left-hand side is a feature that you can take advantage of if your song is getting interrupted by a Bluetooth call. It's going to pause stations that are capable of pausing. And with satellite radio, it also can automatically start you at the beginning of a song. So if you see that it's caching or saving audio, like right now it's not, it doesn't have a, a true strong signal, but if it's caching, it would save here. And then you can go live, you can advance or even rewind. You have a station list available if you want to explore different genres and stations. If you go into options, you can turn certain settings on and off as you prefer. And then sound settings allow you to customize your treble, mid-range and bass, your fader balance, and then you can have the sound system set however you like it, depending on what you're listening to. Keep in mind that when you make changes on the treble, mid-range, and bass, that you need to change those settings for each sound source. Speaker placement is going to be just one time. When you make that change, it stays until you change it again. But treble, mid-range, and bass can be customized for AM, FM, satellite, Bluetooth, you name it. Back to our main menu. We have a video about pairing your Bluetooth phone. Make sure to follow that so that you can register your Bluetooth device. When you click on phone, if you've never set up a phone in your system, just click yes, and then it will allow you to follow the prompts to pair your phone. And you're going to do that from your smartphone. If you've never paired a phone, push menu, go to setup, and then come to Bluetooth and then you'll follow the prompts to pair a phone. Coming back to our main menu, the Lexus ES is compatible with the Inform App Suite 2.0. If you have an update available, it will prompt you to do an update. Just click to follow the steps. This is where you would allow things to link or be activated like Wi-Fi or Lexus plus Alexa. We have a video about Lexus plus Alexa linked in the description below. So you'll see that the update is pretty quick. It's an, always a good idea to do that update so it will clear that message and you're all set. Back to our main menu. If it says projection, it means that you do not have an Android Auto or Apple CarPlay phone plugged in. When you plug them in to the USB port, then the system will recognize if you're using an Apple phone or an Android phone and it will change accordingly, but you do need to turn that feature on. Back to setup. This time we go to projection settings. If you're using an iPhone, make sure Apple CarPlay is selected for on. If you're using an Android phone, make sure you have Android Auto turned on. So if you have both phones in your life, you can turn them both on. 
back to our main menu again. Information, kind of the unsung hero of the menu. You have trip information, traffic information, and the most popular, weather information. This is an awesome feature. It even has a Doppler weather radar map. Look at that, we've got some rain coming in the area. It's going to update for you and it will let you know how long ago it's been updated and the updates come from the Weather Channel. The e-owner's manual is a really handy tool that's on board that will allow you to look up information about your vehicle when you're exploring more about it. You can look at videos, do a visual search, search by keyword, table of contents, you name it, just click to explore. Last but not least, vehicle alert history. If there are alerts about service or other vehicle alert messages, they will be located here. Now let's push menu and go to our final menu item, setup. Now, setup is pretty involved. We are just going to take a quick pass at most of the setup items. If you would like to do a deep dive on any of the setup items, make sure to let us know. The most frequently used items in setup are going to be the general menu, which it defaults to when the ES setup menu opens, and Bluetooth for pairing a phone each time you get a new device. In the general menu, of course, you have your clock settings and just know that in this vehicle, daylight saving time will auto adjust as long as it's turned on to the auto mode. Choose the language, adjust your display, projection settings. That's again where we go for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto permission. The theme is the button color, temperature, unit, Fahrenheit or Celsius, and then you can continue on personalizing and customizing the sound, the pointer sound, if you make an error by clicking off of a clickable surface, things like that. Bluetooth is where you're going to go to pair a Bluetooth device. Once that Bluetooth device is paired, you have additional things that you can control in your phone setup. Audio controls will allow you to customize certain settings for the radio and additional audio features. Voice is a great area to know about because it might be nice to adjust the volume for the onboard system. So just click voice volume, click on the box to slide your finger. All I'm doing is sliding my finger left and right. When you have where you want it, just click down. You can also click on the minus or the plus but as you've seen, sometimes they can be tricky to land on. Vehicle customization is where we discussed how to customize which door in door lock settings is going to open when you touch the driver's door handle. It will, by default, unlock the driver's door only. If you would like it to unlock all doors, then you would just select all doors and then it will save automatically. I always recommend that you choose the driver's door if you drive by yourself frequently, just for safety reasons. I'm just pushing the go back button and then we can continue to scroll down you have navigation settings. A great one to know about here is that you can customize that go home feature that we talked about. 
you can also come to detailed Navi settings. A lot of people choose to turn off the automatic freeway exit list. This is the list that pops up on the right hand side giving you information that is available for that particular exit. Sometimes people feel like that's a very helpful feature when they're traveling, but they don't usually like to use it when they are in their local area, but it's completely up to you. If it's not bothering you, know that it comes on automatically, but if it is bothering you, know that you can turn it off. Wi-Fi is available for four gigs or three months through AT&T. After you've surpassed the trial period, you want to make sure that you subscribe through AT&T for a Wi-Fi data hotspot account for your vehicle. Inform App Suite, traffic information, and data services also have some level of customization in setup. That does it. That takes care of our entire main menu. Great job! Your vehicle has the capability of linking to three garage doors or gates that are home link compatible. We have a video about how to do that linked in the description below. Dome lights and personal lights are operated just with a touch. You can also have your lights set to door mode. When the button is pushed in and flush, then your lights will come on when you open a door. If the button is sticking out, then that means you've canceled that feature. So in order to have your dome lights come on when you open the door, just make sure to push it in so it's flush. Your controls for your moonroof are right here. If you open the moonroof, it will open the glass as well as the shade. You can also close the glass leave the shade open and even tuck it back a little farther. The shade is a manual close. And this button that says up and down will tilt the back of the moonroof just to bring a little fresh air into the vehicle. SOS button is under a small cover. Push this to reach an emergency operator. The armrest on the ES has a release on the side. It tilts up rather than back. So if it's closed and you're pushing here to try to slide or open, it's not going to do that. It's hinged on the far side. Just press to release and it'll pop open for you. Now the model that I'm in has an optional G charger. This is a wireless charger. It does kind of like a trickle charge. So it's one of the slower ways to charge, but it does a nice job maintaining the charge on your compatible phone. So if your phone does not come with wireless charging capabilities built right in, you might have to look into getting a case for your phone that is wireless charging compatible. It does have to make contact with the pad in order to be able to charge. You can turn that feature off and on with the power button. Once you place your device on it, if it's not fully charged, it's going to turn kind of a yellowish orange color. We've got plenty of space to store other items right in your center console. It's a little hard to see, but inside your center console, underneath your armrest, you also have a 12 volt charger. So your 12 volt charger, your optional Qi charger, and then your USB ports that are for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and charging are going to be up at the front. You have two more USB ports at the back 
accessible to rear cabin passengers. These are not for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. They are for charging. There's another 12 volt charger right beside them. Now this is a great thing to know about. Anytime you see a vent, you wanna make sure that you know how to dial to open or close that vent. So if you have rear cabin passengers and their vent is closed, they're not going to be as comfortable. So we wanna make sure that we have those vents open. The ES is equipped with that latch safety system for car seats. You just pop off the cover and then you have access to the mount. Your car seat instructions need to be followed based on the car seat manufacturer. So you'll see those attachments on both outboard seats. So the two main seats have two attachment points. The center seat does not have those lower attachments. All three back seats do have top tethers for car seats. So you can put car three car seats or boosters into the back seat of the ES. You just want to make sure that you are properly following the instructions that come with your particular car seat. In the back seat of the ES, if you pull down on the loop that opens the center armrest, you have cup holders and you have access to a pass-through. The pass-through is for longer cargo that might fit through into the trunk. What you want to make sure of is that if you are valet parking your vehicle, if you have items that are in your trunk to keep them more secure, you want to lock that pass-through. Let me show you how to do that. Inside your smart key is a metal emergency key. See that? All you have to do is push on the dot where it says push and then release that metal smart key. This key will lock your pass-through and your glove compartment. And inside your glove compartment is another step that you need to take to secure your trunk if you have items in the trunk that you would like to keep secure in your valet parking your vehicle. To lock your pass-through, make sure you have your metal key. You're going to really want to hold on to it. You don't want it to fall and get lost in the seating. So hang on to it. It's going to go in like this. So you'll slide that in. You may have to fiddle with it a little bit. It's a little hard to see because it's dark in this area. Then just twist to the right, remove the key, and now your pass-through is locked. Just do the opposite to unlock. Key goes in, twist to the left, remove the key, and now we're open again. So once you lock your pass-through, let me show you the step you need to take in your glove compartment. Okay, looking at our glove compartment, we have the button to release. So right now it's open. Then take a look inside. You have a trunk cancel button. This cancels the functionality of the power trunk. If you push that and it's sticking out pretty far, as far as it can, that means the power operation on your trunk will no longer operate. Whether you have pushed the button 
inside the vehicle, at the back of the trunk, on the key fob, kick sensor, you name it. If it's power operating, it's not going to function. So if you want to restore the functionality, push that button in so it should be pretty close to flush, then your power trunk's going to work again. But if you want to do a valet lockout, you can cancel your trunk mode, your power trunk mode, close your glove compartment, use your metal key. So in the back, we put it in flat. This time, we're putting the key in side to side and you might want to use a little flashlight if you're having trouble, but just slide it in. You should not have to push hard. You just have to find the correct way to line it up. Twist down flat and now it's locked. Slide that key out. This is locked. And if you have now locked your glove box and your pass-through, you take this with you when you valet park your car and give them the key fob without the metal key so they can lock the car, unlock the car, and start the car, but they can no longer power open that trunk. Well, thanks for practicing social distancing with us today and for tuning in to our deep dive tutorial on the 2020 Lexus ES. If we haven't covered your vehicle yet, stay tuned. More to come. Thanks so much, everybody. Stay safe.